The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. What is the best evidence for creation? Well, that's what we're talking about on today's Creation Today show from the CTN studio in Pensacola, Florida. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Hoven, and I'm joined by the amazing Paul Taylor. And on today's show, we're very excited indeed. We've got as a special guest today, Carl Kirby, oh, fellow I creation like speaker, good oh. friend to the ministry. And uh, we'll be talking to him about all sorts of projects he's doing. And of course, the, the introductory line for the show is the title of one of Carl's DVDs. What's oh, the best evidence for creation? An amazing, amazing local. We'll show that to you and let you check it out. Uh, remember, if you have questions, feel free to send them in to questions at creationtoday.org. Or you can join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash creation today. Enjoy the show. We're so glad you're joining us for today's episode of the Creation Today Show, where we believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate in every single detail. We are excited about the show that we have for you today, but first, these announcements. Yes, uh, there's got a lot of announcements that we've got to make. Uh, there's many things that we want to tell you. For example, um, there's a set of DVDs coming out soon with a rather ugly face on the front, but you can what? cope with that. Uh, which is, that. <laughs> it's which a British is... face. You expect them to look like that, you know? <laughs> but yes, we, we did re video the Six Days of Genesis series, and uh, that set of DVDs is available, and you can get that from Creation, creation Store. Creation Store. Oh, oh, RG. RG. oh it's an, it, it really is an incredible foundation to the biblical worldview in Genesis, and I love it. It's, it's the first one that really goes through and, and just exegetically explains Genesis, and it's just an incredible job. And of course, Paul Taylor's the one who did that, so great job on that one. I'm very impressed with it. And of course, another product that we've got uh, coming is the God Quest message, the God Quest DVD. Now, I've heard you give this uh, message so many times, Eric, and it's a, it's, it's a very, very moving message. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's something that you will really want to get hold of. And quite frankly, I wonder how you managed to get the message onto DVD and uh, without bursting into tears, basically. <laughs> well, I actually did <laughs> while, uh, while we were filming. It's, it's just the journey, the story of my, my, my journey to know God. When I really got saved at 21 years old and it goes into my, my sister and her husband and their life. And it just, uh, it's really uh, my story. And it's what I love to share. I was sharing last weekend and I got to share the God Quest message and the pastor got up afterwards and said, older gentleman, uh, has been around a while and around the church, he said, that was the best presentation of the glory of God that I've ever heard in my life. And I, that, that blew me away. That's, that's very, very moving. It, it, it is. So we're excited about that coming out. We hope you'll enjoy that coming to DVD. Uh, we're probably already on DVD, actually. Uh, and again, you can get it from creationstore.org and keep your eye on that website because that's where you can get all the latest products, including some DVDs by the gentleman that we're going to be speaking to very shortly. We are super excited to have our guest today, Carl Kirby with Reason for Hope Ministry, R4H.com. You can check it out. I want to bring him in and bring him onto the show because he has got so much to share with us. We're probably going to have to do two shows with him because he's got a lot of content. I would think so. Carl it's great to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, it's such a uh, what a privilege to be with you. It's great to see you again. And uh, your website, I believe, it's it's r f o r h dot o r g. Is that right? That's right. It stands for Reasons for F O R O R for H dot com. Thanks. Uh, excellent. So uh, it, that's a really great website to uh, to be looking at to find out uh, information. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm confused. Is it dot org or dot com? Well, I think we've even got that net. I think we just covered all the bases, so yeah, I think we're good on any okay, of them. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> R4H.whatever. Go there and check That's out right. Carl's work because he has done some amazing stuff. You were actually with Answers in Genesis uh, really from the very beginning, 20 years ago. Uh, traveled and spoke for them. I, I'm, uh, I just can't wait. I want, I want you to just share. I wanted to share his testimony. I don't know what you got planned for him. But. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was actually going to start mm. even before that, really, Carl. And just uh, I think it would be great for our, uh, uh, our viewers to find out a little bit about you and how you actually came to know the Lord in the first place. Do you want to tell us something about that? Uh, what a privilege to share that. And, and I can't wait to hear yours, Eric, quite honestly, because 
uh, and my goal in life is to encourage people. We need to start sharing our stories. We need to start telling yes. the folks what the Lord has done. You think about it. The Israelites walked across on dry land. They set up 12 stones. Why? Future generations came along. They saw those mm. stones. And they're like, hey, what's that all about? Well, let me tell you what the Lord has done. So I love yes. sharing my testimony. I got saved in Salt Lake City, Utah, of all places. But it's really a long story, so i got to condense it down. My wife got saved before I did. I got married in Japan. My wife is Japanese. And both of us were non-Christians. And so when we got married, uh, they actually told me that I wasn't supposed to marry her because she was classified as a communist because she belonged uh, to a union where she worked. And uh, she was the president of the union, and she'd written letters to the government, the Japanese government, stating she was against nuclear weapons. So they said, hey, she's a communist. You can't marry her when the military did a background check on her. We got married anyway. Long story short, we moved to the Azores. Uh, three Japanese on that island, that uh, and that was it. No Japanese TV, no movies. All three of those Japanese were Christians. And so oh, they wow. were all witnessing to her. And she, my wife, just happened to have a Bible with her. And so she's asking them questions. And they're saying, hey, if you got questions, read the Bible. So she read the Bible. Um, I took her to church because I thought I was a Christian. Come on, I'm an American. I went through catechism. I know all this stuff. Stand up, sit down, kneel. I know when the offering plate's coming. I'm a Christian. So I took her to church. She got saved, man, because she'd been reading the Word of God. That's why what you guys are doing is so important. This is about the Word of God, guys. This is not this is not a storybook, fairy tale. This is the Word of God. So she got saved. Uh, I thought, hey, life's good, mama's happy, I'm happy, I don't need to worry about this stuff anymore. We moved to Salt Lake City, Utah of all places. My brother moved out with me. I made him go to church, because if I had to go to church, he had to go to church. <laughs> and eventually, um, a gentleman came, a guy named Lowell Lundstrom, and unless you know folks out west, probably never heard of him, but Lowell Lundstrom came to Salt Lake City, and he did a revival, May 15, 1987. I took my brother, because I told my brother, you need to go listen to the, the uh, guest speaker. He was the center for the Utah Jazz. I was a big basketball player coach. And he uh, talked that night, but Lowell Lundstrom preached a simple gospel message. And I sat there and it was literally, the scales came off of my eyes. It was like, Carl, you're going to hell. You're sitting in pews, you are going to hell. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that was May 15, 1987. And I'm praising Jesus ever since. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. That's a lot Absolutely like my story wonderful. as far as the scales coming off and me seeing the truth. That is awesome. And, and did you believe in, uh, in Genesis and creation straight away, the literal truth of Genesis or creation? How, how did that come about? Ooh, oh, boy, no. <laughs> I was raised in the ELCA, man. I grew up uh, with really, really kind of strange stuff. Um, and my first Sunday school teacher after I got saved, my first Sunday school teacher literally opened the Word of God and said, okay, Carl, you take evolution, you put it in the Bible, no contradictions, God used it, God directed it, and that's all I knew. And I believed it. I, yeah. I mean, my Sunday school teacher's not gonna lie to me. <laughs> I was an air traffic controller at the time, and I was flying out to Portland, Oregon to go see my dad, and I got up in the cockpit pre-9-11 days, and I, I could ride up there for training. And I started witnessing to the pilot and co-pilot. I was saved maybe six months and started witnessing to the pilot and the co-pilot, and they were like, uh, you know, hey, we're Christians. I was like, praise God, how cool is this? You know, you're flying, and the, all three of us are Christians sharing the Lord, and then they started talking about evolution. And I just said, hey, you take evolution, you put it in the Bible, no contradictions, God used it, God directed it, that's all I knew. Man, pilot just started twisting and twitching and twittering. <laughs> weird, I mean, like, what is wrong with this guy? And then he looked at the pilot, and then he looked back at me and he said, Carl, I'm sorry, but that's incorrect. Now, I praise Jesus if somebody loved me enough that the guy just was straightforward. He wasn't trying to jam anything down my throat. He was just telling me, that's incorrect. I said, why is that? And he did what I tell people I'm eternally thankful for. He opened the Word of God. This is what the Word says. This is what the world says. Contradiction, contradiction. Con They're not the same. I was yeah. blown out of the water. I said, where'd you learn to think like that? I have never seen anybody use the Bible like that. I've grown up with people that, well, I think, I think, I think. And if you push them, maybe they find a verse somewhere. But then when you read that verse, well, it could be this. It could, you know, it's all, this guy used the Bible as an authority. And he told me about the book, The Lie of Evolution by Ken Ham. And when I got back to Salt Lake City, I ordered that book from ICR. I got it, I read it in one night. Bang, that was it, man. Made the Word of God real because it's not fairy tale, it's not fable, it's the Word of God. 
Wow. wow. Well, we got more to talk about. I want to find out from you on your DVD, What's the Best Evidence? I want to find out what the best evidence is, but we'll have to talk about that in another segment because right now we're going to take a short break. Welcome back. You're watching the Creation Today show with me, Paul Taylor, and Eric Hovind. And today we've got a very special guest with us, Carl Kirby from Reasons for Hope Ministries. That's R F O R H dot O R G. Or com. Or, or com, net. Or net. Or in fact, anything Whatever at all. Whatever you want. Go for it. <laughs> and uh, and we we're just having a great time before the break, Carl, listening to you giving your testimony about how uh, you were saved and then how you came to understand the Word of God. And it's interesting yeah. that in a very different way, but actually my journey. Of, uh, of believing the Bible to be true was very much based on understanding that uh, Genesis was true mm -hmm. and that uh, that was the foundation for the authority that we have. And I just want to pick up on something on that and uh, maybe our viewers will wonder why I'm, it'll sound as if I'm changing the subject, but I'm not, as our viewers will see, because uh, you mentioned a little bit about being an air traffic controller. And at one time you were uh, an air traffic controller at Chicago O'Hare Airport. And I think at the time that was the busiest airports in the world at that time is that right yeah it was it was uh, it was actually it's an ADD lovers uh, dream man it's a dream job you get to get in there and play video games all day long just don't let the dots touch <laughs> don't yeah. let the dots touch I love it <laughs> and, and, and the reason I bring that up is because you've got a um, <laughs> you've got a, a DVD called uh, Genesis the bottom strip of uh, uh, bottom strip of uh, the Christian faith and uh, you're talking in that uh, DVD about your time as an air traffic controller and maybe it's sort of an introduction to that can you remember any particular hair-raising moments that you had uh, when when you were an air traffic controller Ooh, you try to forget those to be real honest with you Paul <laughs> um, but uh, I do remember a couple typically when weather would come into the area because on a, on a pretty day you could land 3,000 3,500 aircraft a day um, uh, you could land 117 aircraft well legally 115 sorry my best was 117 <laughs> but it was uh, 115 aircraft an hour and we were doing that every day uh, when I left I mean it was every hour on the hour from 11 o'clock until 7 8 o'clock at night bang it was just moving and so uh, you get things that happen especially with weather and a guy takes a turn on you and uh, I had one time, this one was in Salt Lake City, I told an aircraft to turn uh, because he was headed towards the mountains and he refused because there was weather there. So I told him, well, climb, and he refused because there was weather up there. And so in frustration, I finally said to the guy, I said, I said, sir, you'll turn, you'll climb, or you'll hit a, or you'll hit a mountain. You make the call, which one you want? Wow. We'll turn. So wow. <laughs> you, know, you get those type of things, but, uh, and I've had some where they got too close. I mean, I made mistakes in my day, but it's such a safe system. You have so many checks and balances, two or three people overlooking and watching to make sure things are safe. So I don't want to give people the impression that it's an unsafe <laughs> system at all. Very, very safe. But hey, we're human and we still make mistakes. Wow. <laughs> all right, so you spent 20 plus years now in the creation ministry mm -hmm. and your talk, what is the bottom strip? I mean, all right, where are you at there? What, what, what do you see after all of your years' experience? What do you say, okay, people, this is what we've got to focus on. What is it? Well, I love what Paul is talking on this, this new video series on the six days because it leads right into it. And the best evidence, what I like to do is I like to make real-world evangelism. 
hey, let's go to a zoo, a museum, aquarium. Let's start taking and using what we see in the world to bring light to God's word and show that what we see in the world is absolutely consistent with the world. So we'll go through all kind of really unique animals. We'll go through the stars because the heavens declare the glory of God. Yeah. The human body, all of them are amazing, but the best evidence that God created is something that's very simple that we take for granted, and it's God's word. I mean, when God tells us that in the beginning he created, he means it. I mean, Jesus Christ, our rabbi, took Je he's quoted Genesis 25 times as real history. Wow. And if our rabbi can take Genesis as real history, we should be able to as well. And so I have to fall back. No matter all the cool stuff that we see in the world, and there's a lot of it, the Word of God is absolutely the best evidence that he created. And that's uh, the foundation for everything, isn't it? And uh, if I could just sort of uh, tease out this little bit about Genesis being the bottom strip. Do you want to explain to us what the bottom strip actually means and what the relevance of that is from, from your former work to, to Genesis? Sure. You think about it. Best evidence that God created is the Word of God. Well, there's 400,000 churches across the nation of America. 400 plus thousand churches. 6,000 first-run theaters. And if we're honest... Those theaters are kicking our tails when it comes to reaching this wow. this younger generation. So what's That's happened so is, is that the Word of God has been relegated to fairy tale fable status. They've been duped into thinking, oh, there's no evidence for God. Word of God is full of mistakes and errors. You can't trust that book. And so the, what you're doing with your six days, boy, there's a key issue. Days in Genesis, one of the tools that's used in a major way to get doubt into the Word of God. Well, Genesis, the bottom strip of the Christian faith, was me applying my faith in the real world. The same way that I love hearing the fact that Eric is sharing his stories. Yeah. We need to share where we come from. Uh, we are missionaries, every one of us, regardless of where God has placed us. He just happened to place me as an air traffic controller for 24 and a half years. So I use the analogy of an air traffic controller at O'Hare, what I learned there, the mechanism that you had to have a point from which to start to get back in control. I use that and tie that back into the Word of God. That is our point from which we start. That's our bottom strip. So the bottom strip, it was a piece of paper, is that, am I right? A, a piece of paper, you had a lot of pieces of paper, and sometimes things got a little bit um, tricky with uh, lots of planes and so on coming at them, and that's when you had to do something about focusing on those pieces of paper, is that right? Absolutely. Every time you get an airplane, you get another uh, strip of paper, and when you get a new one, it goes on top. So the aircraft that you've got at the bottom, that's the one that you've had the longest. So that's either the closest or the furthest one away. Imagine that they're coming in. When you've got an airplane seven miles from the airport, you've got maybe 45 seconds to deal with him. The guy that's 60 miles out that you're just getting that strip on, oh, you've got a lifetime to deal with him. He's at least five, seven minutes away. So, you know, you've got to have your priorities and get things right here. And so you've got to have that point from which to start because when you get a bunch of things, your mind just starts running and you start looking at things, you lose focus. So now you start at the bottom, you go to the next one, you go to the next one, but you don't keep going all the way through all those strips. You've got to, once you've given two or three instructions, now you drop back down to the bottom and you just check and make sure, hey, he's doing what I said, he's doing what I said, he's doing what I said. Then you start giving control instructions again, and that's how you get back in control when everything starts going crazy. Because if you try to take it all in all at once, you're, you're toast. And Christian, we're under attack and the world's throwing a lot at us. We have to have a point from which to start to get back in control, and that's the Word of God. That is a beautiful analogy because there is so much confusion today in the church, in the world, saying, how do we even understand this? How do we know this is true? What about the contradictions? What about, what about, what about? And yep. there's so much confusion. You're exactly right. Until we get back down to that bottom strip, we're not going to have the truth. Wow. That's right. And if we don't do it, think about this, Eric. If we, the body of Christ, don't allow the Word of God to be our authority and our standard, the point from which we start for all of our thinking, how in the world could we ever expect the lost to trust it? They see That's us when right. we compromise. They see us when we make excuses. And so, to me, bottom line is Christian. We have got to become bold. We yeah. have got to become bold. If you want to pass on a message of hope, you have to be bold and know that what you're talking about is true. And the Word of God is that. I mean, it's that simple. It's the very, very beginning of truth. We're talking with Carl Kirby from Reason for Hope Ministry. And uh, in coming up in the next segment, I want to show you some stuff that he's working on that is phenomenal. Stick around. We'll show you that right after this. Creation Today is introducing a new audio resource, the Holy Bible on Double Speed. The first disc of this three-disc set presents Alexander Scorby's wonderful reading of the Bible at the original recorded speed. The second disc is digitally enhanced to one and a half times faster than the original speed. 
The third disc is literally double the speed of the original audio recordings. With this new resource, we invite you to fly through the Bible to gain an amazing new view of God's Word. Join Paul Tater of Creation Today as he discusses topics like dinosaurs and the Bible, creation or evolution, who cares, how old is the earth, Noah and the flood, and James Usher in biblical chronology. This set includes five CDs and a PDF study guide to go along with each lesson. To order this new series entitled Taylor Talks, visit us at www.creationstore.org. This is the Creation Today Show, and our special guest today is Carl Kirby from Reason for Hope Ministry, has been involved in creation ministry for over 20 years, and it's been just a pleasure to have him. I want to tell you, he's got some videos some, that he's done that he's produced called Debunked, and they are fabulous. Carl, can you tell us about these and then intro one for us? we got to show them one of these. Yeah, you bet. Uh... Uh, today's generation, they think different, okay? Let's be honest, 2.2 second attention span. So we've got to come after them. And my, my goal was, all right, let's go after this younger generation. Uh, so I call it kind of a dirty jobs meets mythbusters, you know, that's, approach. Where that's exactly There's a lot of bunk is. in the world. And some of the bunk is, well, you can't trust the Bible. It's full of mistakes and errors. And and I don't have to share my faith to, to be, uh, you know, be, and I can just live my faith. Well, the one that I wanted to share with the folks today is, uh, We've heard this, we've all heard this. There is no evidence for God. Well, we figured let's debunk that claim that there's no evidence for God, but let's do it in a way, it's fast paced, it's fun, more information than you than you can typically take in a setting, but done in such a way that I'd go back and study some more on that. And so that was our whole goal was to use the uh, debunk video as a way to get people excited to want to go and dig and study some more. So they're just fun well, and fast paced. Guys, let's roll one of those right now. Let's roll that one. Hope. That's a commonly used word around here. I hope my football team wins the Super Bowl. I hope Johnny asked me to prom. I hope it snows today so I don't have to go to school. I hope I get that job. I get that raise. I pass the test. I score the winning point. I get the car. I don't have to kiss Ann Hilga at Thanksgiving. More seriously. I hope my friend gets better. I hope I do something great with my life. I hope one day there's world peace. Hope. We say it and we hear it all the time. And I don't want to trivialize it or disregard the aforementioned. But honestly, those are temporary things and they're uncertain at best. It's not that they aren't real or that they're wrong. But let's be honest. If your team doesn't win, Johnny doesn't ask you to prom. If it doesn't snow, you don't get that job or the raise or pass the test. If you don't get the car and Ann Hilga happens to smack a big wet one on you, you're going to get through it. And even if your friend doesn't get better, you don't do something great with your life. And even, even if there's never world peace, all of the outcomes are uncertain. And whether they happen or not, the way you want doesn't really change much in the grand scheme of things because it's all temporary. In the grand scheme of eternity, temporary hopes seem frivolous. See, hope in all the above scenarios is nothing more than a wish, like crossing your fingers, closing your eyes, and saying out loud, I hope I get that raise, I hope I get that raise, I hope I get that raise, is actually going to make a difference. I mean, you don't know what's actually going to happen at all, right? Yet we wish. We click our ruby heels together, we rub the rabbit's foot and avoid walking under ladders and all that, and we slowly open our eyes to see if the wish came true. Well, let me make a quick distinction. There are things we all hope for in the wishing sense, and then there are things we place our hope in. So can we really call uncertain, confidence lacking, rolling the dice, closing your eyes, ruby clicking, rabbit foot rubbing, wishful thinking hope? Is that what hope is all about? And can we really place our hope in looks or fame or money or power? Shouldn't true hope, ultimate hope, eternal hope be based on truth, facts, something more than a wish, something I can know, be certain of, be confident in? I mean, if that kind of hope exists, then it can change us, encourage us, remove fear, relieve doubt, give us strength and get us through anything, give meaning and purpose to everybody, help us love more, understand more, forgive more, accept more, and it can inspire us to share the source of said hope to anybody and everybody. If that kind of hope exists, it changes everything. So does it exist? Yes, and I'll be blunt, it's only found in Jesus Christ because he is the way, the hope, and the life. All other hope is temporary, uncertain, wishful thinking at best. Oh, come on. What if I hope that every little thing's going to be all right, or we all just become non-existent when we die, or that I'll get to heaven because I, I lived a good life? Well, rub the rabbit's foot and roll the dice, Jimmy. Those are uncertain wishes based on flimsy guesses. 1 Timothy 2.5.6 declares, There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. John 3.6 
16 states, whoever believes in him, that is Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life, which is why Paul confidently wrote in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Without Christ, we are still dead in our trespasses and separated from God, which makes us godless and wicked. And Job chapter 27, verse 8 says, for what is the hope of the godless when God cuts him off, when God takes away his life? Without Christ, there is no real hope, period. So do me a favor and finish this sentence. I place all my hope in blank. If Jesus isn't in that blank, you have no hope. That pretty much covers it, folks. And I think we can safely say that this thought, this concept, this idea that you can have true hope without God has been debunked. Adios. Well, that's an amazing video, Carl. Yeah. Uh, it was a really great to, to see that. And as you said, it's very, very fast. It, uh, it tells yeah, us very, very that. rapidly what, uh, boom, what boom, we boom, need boom, to boom. know. Now, people can find that, uh, th that video and other ones like it where? Where can they find that, Carl? Uh, if they go to r f o r h dot com, there's going to be a a menu a tab, you know, that, and it has some debunked. They can go through and look at all uh, six of them, and uh, we're going to give a free one away to anybody that wants one. If they choose whichever one they want, go to checkout, and uh, when they get to the checkout, there's a thing that says the promotion code. Just type in get debunked. When you type that in. Uh, that 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 one will be totally free. That download will be totally free. Nice. We'd like people to take them and share them and get the word out, uh, because I think there's some good information in there. It gets people to think. It's incredible information. So you heard it. Go to uh, his page, reasonforhope.org.net.com, whatever you want. Go to the debunk tab and click one to order one and use the promo code get debunked. Yep. Get debunked and you can get that for free. That's great, man. That's absolutely marvelous. Uh, and you've got several of these and plans for more and your 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 ministry. I mean, you're traveling all over and speaking. I, I'm blown away with everything that you're doing. You guys are staying incredibly busy, aren't you? We have to. I mean, uh, look, this is a this is a physique that can't miss too many meals. And if I don't speak, I don't eat. So you know, I got to <laughs> stay on the road, brother. I was on the road 217 days last year. But really, seriously, it's more about. I think time's short. We got to get yeah. out and get serious with people, let them know that God's word is true and they can trust it. So I'm just passionate about the word of God and getting folks excited about it. Let me just say, if you want to uh, schedule Carl to speak, I encourage you to get on his website. He's got a contact form right there. You need to get on there and you need to get him hooked into your church or to your ministry. Get him somewhere to minister because let me tell you, God is using him to change lives everywhere he goes. And I, I encourage you to get on board with what God is doing through Carl and through Reason for Hope Ministry. It really is amazing what God is doing, isn't it? It is absolutely incredible. <laughs> it's been marvelous to be talking to you today, Carl, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll be back with us next week on next week's show as well because we've got so much more that we want to, to talk about and we're going to be talking on the subject of uh, the media as well as one of the things wow. that we'll be saying so Great thanks sure. so much for being with us today Carl God bless you hey God bless you get that DVD on the days it's important and get <laughs> Eric's testimony that's very important bless you guys excellent thank you Carl by the way Carl also has an app if you go to the app store reasons for hope and you can get his app as well from his website marvelous and don't forget if you've got questions that you want to ask us then make sure that you contact us questions at creationtoday.org facebook.com slash creation today or twitter at creation today and we got a great youtube channel where we're putting all kinds of videos youtube.com slash creation today we hope you enjoyed today's show make sure and check us out each week as a new episode is coming your way Do you need the tools to defend your faith? Visit our websites for up-to-date content. Attend one of our live events. And shop online at creationstore.org. We are Creation Today. ORG, or you can join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash creation today. Enjoy the show. We're so glad you're joining us for today's episode of the Creation Today Show, where we believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate in every single detail. We are excited about the show that we have for you today, but first, 
these announcements. Yes, uh, there's a, a lot of announcements that we've got to make. Uh, there's many things that we want to tell you. For example, um, there's a, a set of DVDs coming out soon with a rather ugly face on the front, but you can what? cope with that. Uh, <laughs> which is, that? <laughs> it's which a is British face. You expect them to look <laughs> like that, you know? But yes, we, we did re video the six days of Genesis series, and uh, that set of DVDs is available, and you can get that from Creation, Creation Store. Creation Store. Org. Org. Oh, it's an, it, it really is an incredible foundation to the biblical worldview in Genesis, and I love it. It's, it's the first one that really goes through and, and just exegetically explains Genesis, and it's just an incredible job. And of course, Paul Taylor is the one who did that, so great job on that one. I'm very impressed with it. And of course, another product that we've got uh, coming is the God Quest message, the God Quest DVD. Now, I've heard you give this uh, message so many times, Eric, and it's a, it's, it's a very, very moving message. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's something that you will really want to get hold of. And quite frankly, I wonder how you managed to get the message onto DVD and uh, without bursting into tears, basically. <laughs> well, I actually did <laughs> while, uh, while we were filming. It's, it's just the journey, the story of my, my, my journey to know God. When I really got saved at 21 years old and it goes into my, my sister and her husband and their life. And it just, uh, it's really uh, my story. And it's what I love to share. I was sharing last weekend and I got to share the God Quest message and the pastor got up afterwards and said, older gentleman, uh, has been around a while and around the church, he said, that was the best presentation of the glory of God that I've ever heard in my life. And I, that, that blew me away. That's, that's very, very moving. It, it, it is. So we're excited about that coming out. We hope you'll enjoy that coming to DVD. Uh, we're probably already on DVD, actually. Uh, and again, you can get it from creationstore.org and keep your eye on that website because that's where you can get all the latest products, including some DVDs by the gentleman that we're going to be speaking to very shortly. We are super excited to have our guest today, Carl Kirby with Reason for Hope Ministry, r4h.com. You can check it out. I want to bring him in and bring him onto the show because he has got so much to share with us. We're probably going to have to do two shows with him because he's got a lot of content. I would think so. Carl it's great to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, it's such a uh, what a privilege to be with you. It's great to see you again. And uh, your website, I believe, it's it's r f o r h dot o r g. Is that right? That's right. It stands for Reasons for F O R O R for H dot com. Thanks. Uh, excellent. So uh, it, that's a really great website to uh, to be looking at to find out uh, information. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, I'm confused. Is it the following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. What is the best evidence for creation? Well, that's what we're talking about on today's Creation Today show from the CTN studio in Pensacola, Florida. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Hoven, and I'm joined by the amazing Paul Taylor. And on today's show, we're very excited indeed. We've got as a special guest today, Carl Kirby, God, fellow I creation speaker, good oh. friend to the ministry. And uh, we'll be talking to him about all sorts of projects he's doing. And of course, the, the introductory line for the show is the title of one of Carl's DVDs, What's oh, the Best Evidence for Creation? An amazing, amazing look. We'll show that to you and let you check it out. Uh, remember, if you have questions, feel free to send them in to questions at creationtoday.com.